All right, guys, so uh, worksheet from Wednesday. Uh, yeah, it should have hopefully been easy. Um, those of you that were not here, the, the worksheet can just be found. Uh, I'm not going to grade it. We sure to talk about it. So, uh, under section 4 2. Dalton throws his hands down. Finally, oh, we did it! <laughs> so, it's right here under 4 2 is, is that, that assignment. Um, all right, but uh, going over it, guys, real quick. The, the first three say draw a picture. Uh, that exercise, that activity of drawing that picture, hopefully, kind of got you thinking about whether it's really necessary to draw a picture. Because I think it's in number one, what would your what would be your included uh, angle in number one? It'd be angle M. Okay, now if I drew a picture, it's easy to see that, but looking at the names of those segments, look at the names of those segments, doesn't M get shared by both segments? So then that is the point that is going to identify then the angle that is between those segments. Okay? Same thing kind of happens in number two, but it's reverse. If T is the included side, then GT and MT have to be the sides that uh, include that angle, right? As an angle T is the included angle, the sides are MT and GT. Uh, what would be the included angle in number three? It'd be G. It's the thing that's shared by both things, right? So that kind of hopefully reiterates what I talked about earlier in the week and, and part of last week is that we should be able to do all of our geometry without pictures, right? Okay. Uh, and, and I don't, I don't think that the the math community when they were developing this and rehashing all these ideas and the way that we name things, that that was a kind of something that they did, they directed towards and said, oh, we want to be able to do this without pictures. Um, I, I think just the structure, the way we use names uh, for uh, segments and angles and that kind of stuff, the byproduct is uh, essentially the fact that we see overlap in the names that tells us something about the angle and, and so forth. Okay? Um, I don't think it was is intentional. Uh, number four. Okay? Here's something I want, I want you guys to think about. Okay? Uh, if I come in here and I say, none of you have A's in this class. Does that mean every one of you has an F? No. No. So when I say that you are uh, not something, it does not mean that you are automatically the complete opposite of that. Does that make sense? So when I say no, they're not congruent, okay, or maybe I'm trying to find, let's, let's say this, I don't have enough information to say that they are congruent, does not instantly make them incongruent. Does that make sense? Okay. Just because I don't have enough information to say that they are congruent does not automatically say that they're incongruent. Okay? So that's something to think about as we go through these. And that's why they're asking you to say write congruent and then by SSS or SAS, if not, write not enough information. Okay? Because those two in number four, are they congruent by side angle side or side side side? No, the orientation of parts is SSA, right? Okay, um, not one of the two uh, postures we have. But does not mean that those triangles may or may not be congruent based on further information. If we were to further investigate these things, maybe we find out that segment NH is congruent to segment DR. And then we could figure out that those would be congruent by side, side, side. Does that make sense? Okay, so just because we don't have the necessary criteria present does not mean that those triangles may not be congruent. We just can't say it yet. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. Um, it'd be like if we went through an entire year and I never took a grade, and then until the final, and I said, well, because I haven't taken a grade, you're all F students. Well, that doesn't make sense, right? Okay. You don't have, I don't have enough information documented to show whether you are an A student, a B student, a C student, so forth. Okay. Same idea here. What about number five? Is there enough information to make a valid conclusion in number five? Yes. Be side angle side, right? Okay. We can make uh, EF EF congruent to EF uh, because of the reflective property. 
All right, and then on the triangle on the left, you got side angle side. Triangle on the right, you got side angle side. What about number six? Is there enough there? Do we have the reflective property again? Yep. Two triangles screw up by side side side. Um, number seven. Draw in the information that we know. We know dy is near to dy. If I Look at those. What's the ordering of parts there for that triangle? Side side angle, right? The angle is not between our sides, and that's uh, in everything that we've done so far, and all the and even today, the new ones that we learned today. Um, we're basically trying to figure out, you know, all the ones that we so we're talking about side side side. Uh, and that's, that was pretty obvious, so I'm not even going to kind of mention that one. The other ones are side, angle, side, angle, side, angle. If I look at those, then those are going to be the ones we talked about today. Um, this angle or this side has to be immediate in regards to the things that are surrounding it. Meaning that if I look at side, angle, side, the angle has to be immediately after a side. Okay, in both directions, meaning that if I had my triangle, if that's a side, that's an angle, that's a side. You see how they're immediate? Okay, I'm going from this object directly to that object to that one. Some people are saying uh, something like this. If I give you this, they're saying that that's side, angle, side, because they're saying I'm going side all the way up here to an angle and then to a side. Does that make sense? But are those parts immediate? No, I'm skipping over that. I'm skipping over that side. So I'm skipping over some things. And that's a problem with those two postures, side angle, side, and angle, side, angle. They're telling you that your um, object in the middle, your middle shape, segment, or angle has to be included between two objects. It's being made by two segments or it's being made by two angles. Is that all right there, buddy? Um, I think that's a... One of the, the most common errors that I see throughout um, every year, once we've learned all four of these uh, postulates, and, or three postulates, one theorem, um, that becomes a very common thing to do. Are these two can grow? Side, 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 right? One, number nine? Yep, side, angle, side. Ten? No, enough info, right? Okay. Um, we know that that's congruent to itself, but now I've already got two things marked in the triangle on the left, two things marked in the triangle on the right. It's not enough. How about number 11? Side angle side, right? We've got vertical angles there. Okay. So side angle side is present. And what about number 12? Side side side, right? That's the most, I think that's the most direct way. Did anybody say that this angle here is congruent to that one? Because yes. they're vertical. And if I look at that, what, what is an option for me? Side, angle, side. So the more you start learning about your shape, the more uh, that kind of comes to the surface in regards to congruency, it opens the door for you to be able to maybe use two or three or four different postulates. Does that make sense? Or theorem. Okay. Um, so your neighbor might go through a proof, and they might they might use enough. Um, relationships to, to use side, side, side. You might go through the exact same proof but recognize you got vertical angle, so you went side, angle, side route. You're both right. Okay? Uh, and that's going to happen, I want to say a whole lot, but it, it's occasional. Okay? That's, that's um, not out of the realm for, for multiple theorems to, uh, to be present. Okay? But they should all still lead to the same conclusion of congruency. Is that an okay assignment? Pretty easy? Okay, so that was kind of hopefully gearing us up for what we do today a little bit, because uh, you're going to see it today again, but now we're going to have four, four ways of determining congruency. Okay, so in section 4.3, we're going to talk about angle side angle, or ASA, and angle angle side, okay, or angle, or AAS, okay. These things, um, they actually kind of work in tandem, okay. Think about this. If I have angle, side, angle, how many angles do you know congruent to how many angles? 
I go angle side angle. That's how many angles? Angle side angle. Specifically, you know two angles can grow to two angles, right? But in any triangle, if you know two angles can grow in one triangle, to so two angles and another triangle, you automatically know what about the third angle? They're congruent as well. So when I say ASA, I really have ASAA or AASA. Is that going to make sense? I have all the angles in a side. And the same thing with angle, angle, side. Okay? Um, we're going to walk through uh, this understanding of, of these two uh, arguments. When we, when we talk about an included side, so I'm going to jump to slide four real quick to get this definition. Uh, it's the same way we talk about included angles. We've already seen that before. Um, when we talk about included angles, included angles are the angle that's created by two sides. The angle created by two sides. This here, we're going to reverse it a little bit. It says the side created by two angles. Would you guys agree if I were to write on top of angle O? Angle O is the angle that I'm interested in, or one of the angles that I'm interested in. And then write on top of angle N. Would you agree one of those red rays overlap one of those blue rays? Okay. Where that happens, that segment is the segment that is being created or that is being made by the two angles. That overlap is the shared segment. That's the one that is referred to as the included one. Okay. Uh, so O N here is the included angle. When we talk about inclusion, included angles or included sides, we are going off the idea that the parts have to come in the picture kind of in a consecutive or immediate order. Meaning when I look at angle O, when I move to the next part, okay, it has to be immediate. I can't skip over a side or an angle. Okay? The next part then would be segment O in. And then I have to go to the next part, which would be in. Does that make sense? Okay. Or angle in. So those parts are immediate. They're one after another or consecutive parts. With angle, angle side, eventually you're going to see that that immediacy, uh, in fact, a word, is not uh, necessary. Okay? Uh, because of the kind of the exclusion of one of our uh, sides. So that's the included side. We have sides then that must not be included, right? If we have inclusion, we have, okay, a lot of people like to call it exclusion, but mathematically we say non-inclusion, okay? Uh, yep, we're going to. Why? Well, what's wrong with being mean? Oh, life's mean sometimes, dude. We have, we have to learn how to get over that. Uh, so this is, this is the included side, right? That would be a non-included side. That one is not between the two angles. Does that make sense? Okay. Would MN be a non-included side as well? <laughs> MN is not between the two angles uh, that we have identified. Okay. And you see then that if I'm talking about non-included, okay, so I'm looking at these parts. There is not that immediate kind of consecutive relationship here because we go from an angle, and the next immediate part would be this side, right? I'm skipping over that. I'm going straight to this angle, and then I'm getting to this side. These two are immediate, but this one doesn't happen. Okay? So angle, angle, side is the only one that that, that uh, will will impact, and we see them that that will impact. Um, so we, does everybody understand what included sides mean? What not included sides mean? Before we go on, because our theorems are going to involve those. Real quick, if I asked you in this picture what's the included side, you would say as T, a non-included side would be RS. Okay. Angles. Angles can also be non-included. So let's say that I'm looking, I'm forcing you to look at that segment and that segment. What would be the included angle? R. So S would be a non-included. T would be a non-included. So we, we need to be able to identify those things to be uh, very helpful. All right, so that gets us to the ASA postulate. Okay, ASA postulate. If two angles in the included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles in the included side of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. Okay. 
still the conclusion that we've seen with side side side. It's the conclusion that we saw with side angle side. The fact that then the triangles are congruent. Okay? It's just now the if part is a reorganization of parts. Okay? Now you have two angles that are sandwiching the side. Okay? And the picture there in the bottom is what we'll be looking for uh, inside our process, inside our homework questions, inside our test questions, proofs, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to give you a picture uh, of kind of what this means, but I think there's a, just kind of give you a visual real quick. Colette, come here. Yeah, come on. I just hold this in front of you like that. Are you going to hit me? Well, I mean, I don't have any sharp enough. <laughs> um, all right, so that right there, guys, that picture in front of you is a angle side angle idea, okay? Where the pieces of the white. Turn that away. I gotta look at it too. Put your head out front there. Um, so we've got um, an angle here, a white angle, it has to be that side. We got a yellow angle, it has to be that side. And the, the segment that is between them, the included segment, is the, the yardstick, right? That has to be that side. If I give you that information, I say, okay, now in front of you, construct a triangle. And you construct that triangle. And then I say, okay, disassemble. But using the exact same information, the exact same order, construct a second triangle. The two triangles that you create are going to be the same. Because to create a second side for this thing, to maintain that white angle, don't I have to align my segment right there like that? Like that? And to create that yellow angle, don't I have to align my segment like that? Well, if those are going to intersect, create the hex. If they're going to intersect, they're going to be like that, right? Well, if I disassemble, using the same exact stuff then, come back together, is the triangle the same? Yeah, I mean, it can't be different, all right? Thanks. Did I give you a paper cut? Yeah. All right, so... The idea, again, uh, with GeoGebra, I think this is helpful. Um, we're taking those parts, okay? The argument is when they go there, okay, those distances are the same. Those blue distances are the same, okay? Now the idea of putting, kind of keeping the white angle and the yellow angle that I had uh, with less there uh, a moment ago would be extend one of those sides, okay? and then extend the other side so those angles are maintained. Now, here's the thing. Will those two black rays that I just put in always intersect? Yeah. Why? When would be the time that those two rays, so let me... Careful. What? Okay, so Jim is right here. Jim is saying the only time that those dotted lines, or those dotted rays, would not intersect is when that angle there and that angle there add up to 180. Because they'd be the same side interior angles, aren't they? And if same side interior angles are supplementary, then the lines are going to be parallel, right? In a triangle, can those blue angles ever add to 180? No, because we have to have leftover for the third angle, correct? Okay? So 
those two lines, if these, if these angles, these blue angles come from a triangle, okay, then those dotted lines are always going to intersect, okay? Meaning that the, the yardsticks that I was, that I was showing in front of you, they're always going to cross each other. And they're going to cross at J, okay? And then when I show the information for these segments, I never set out to figure out whether, you know, A, C, and A prime, C prime were, were forced to be 9.21. That just appeared. Does that make sense? It's the conclusion of angle side angle. All right? You will always get congruency with angle side angle. Is that all right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> what? Uh, what? I'll increase the value of your computer. All right. So now we have we have our last our last kind of three object uh, congruency statement or congruency theorem or postulate uh, on. On Monday and Tuesday of next week, I'll introduce what we call hypotenuse leg, which is another congruency argument, but it only uses hypotenuses and legs. And hopefully, then you understand that that's only true for then what kind of triangle? Right triangles, right? They're the only ones that have hypotenuses or hypotenuse. I think it's made the plural. I don't know. Uh, so the angle-angle side theorem says if two angles. In a non-included side, so a side that is not between those two angles, is congruent to two angles in a side that is not between those two angles. If we start off with that congruency, then the result is that the triangles are congruent. Angle, angle, side is a theorem. Okay? So if my question is, why is that going to work? Why is that true? Your answer would be the what of that theorem. How do I how do I show the why of a theorem? I go through the what? I go through the proof of it. Okay? So when I ask you why is the angle angle side theorem true, you would answer with the proof. If I ask you why the angle side angle postulate is true, you tell me because it is, because we have to we have to be convinced that it is. We, we go through the descriptions, we go through the, uh, the pictures and the activities and the process, and we see, you know, no matter what I try, they're going to be congruent. Postulates you can't prove, right? Okay, this information that we're just going to say is accepted, we know to be a fact. Why is this able to be proven? Think about this. If I start off with this criteria, would you guys agree that that's angle, angle, side? The side that we're identified is not between the two angles that are being identified, right? That's angle, angle, side. If I were to prove that why this is true, the first thing I would write down would be an argument about angle C and angle F. What would you be able to tell me about angle C and angle F? They're congruent. Why are they congruent? I don't know. They line up. Huh? They line up. What does that mean? Because they are. Huh? You can't just say that. You can't just say because they are. They are. Huh? Yeah, they're Angle C and congruent angle F is not given. Why not? Because it's not written up there. Why is it written up there? Because you already have the two angles that are congruent and the third angle has to have a completion. Absolutely. So, so if I have angle A as 30 degrees, what's angle D? 30 degrees, right? A and D have to be congruent. If angle B is 100, what's angle E? 100. How many degrees have I used so far in both times? 130. What's left over in both times? 50. And that 50 can only go in one spot, angle C and angle F, right? So we get then that the third angles are congruent. Jim said if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then the third angles are congruent. That's the third angle there. So when I have angle, angle, side, when I have angle, angle, side, okay, it's like six degrees in here right now. Thank you. Roll your sleeves up a little bit. Okay. If, if, listen, if we have angle, angle, side, you automatically get that angle and that angle congruent. Because when you have two angles congruent to two angles, you ultimately have three angles congruent to three angles. So, 
If I were to cover that information up and that information up, now it's those that the stuff I cover up is still true. But look at your parts now. Now what would you have in those two triangles? Angle side angle. Side, angle. And that's a postulate that we know always be true, right? Okay, so angle angle side produces for you ultimately angle side angle. And once you have angle side angle, don't you have congruent triangles? Yes. Okay. And that will always happen. You will always get that. Okay. So that, that's why this is a theorem. I can show you, I can prove to you why angle angle side produces congruent triangles because it always defaults down to angle side angle. Okay. Um, where can I use that idea? Where can I use that concept or understand that concept? Every time I go through a proof and we say angle angle side is the reason, we could also say angle side angle is the reason. Anytime I say that angle side angle is the reason, I could have then also said angle angle side is the reason. Does that make sense? Okay, they're kind of interchangeable because when I get one, I ultimately have the other. Okay. Um, so let's do a couple questions here. Okay, now these questions here will be kind of like what the worksheet was. Okay. Uh, I want to talk about whether these things are congruent or whether I don't have enough information. So our tools right now are side, 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 angle, side. We've been doing those, right? But now we add to it angle, side, angle, and angle, angle, side. Okay? So now I want to talk about are these two congruent? What? No, why not? Oh, we got that. <laughs> so I added that and changed your idea, tried to change your mind, right? So a lot of people are seeing that we just have two marks with some of these. You can, because of what we talked about by looking at pictures, you can determine whether shapes are overlapping. So you can determine whether there's reflective property occurring. You can determine whether there's re uh, uh, vertical lines. Okay? You can determine, uh, based off maybe parallelism, they give you parallel lines, whether there are certain angles that are congruent that might not be marked up there congruent. Okay? So there are things that you can gain from pictures and gain from other notation. And you want to fill that in before you make an argument. So I fill that information in right now, and now I'm going to make an argument. And now I'm going to kind of go through that process. I think a lot of times, the, especially when they're attached to one another, the clutter can sometimes lead me astray. So I like to maybe redraw, cover up with my hand, one of those signs. What is the ordering of parts there? Side angle side. And it's careful. If I go side, angle, side, then the parts have to be immediate after one another. I mean, the angle has to be created by the two sides. That's side, side, angle. Okay, see how the angle is not, you do it this way, side, side, angle. Hopefully that works. Right here? Yeah. But it's not marked. The, the markings are telling because these things are standing for congruent angles and congruent sides. So we don't know if this angle is congruent to anything else in the other triangle. So why can't we do it? Why can't we do side, side, so that angle in the bottom corner isn't marked either? So, what, so you're saying, why can't I go from this side to that angle to that side? Because the side angle side postulate says that the angle has to be included. And part of that inclusion idea was that that angle has to be made by those two sides. This angle is not being made by those two sides. This is the angle that's made by those two sides. See how these, see how these parts right now side, and then go directly to an angle, right. and then back to the side? That process is saying that this, by the definition, that's the included angle. So, what, so what's the, what is it? What is that? Okay, so, so this picture, this ordering of parts, is that the angle is not between your two sides. So it's either that or it's that. That makes sense? We usually don't want to write this one, right? Okay. But if it's side side angle, does that match up to any of these? So these two, based off that information, we cannot make a conclusion here. We do not know them to be congruent or not. Okay? If the answer is side side angle, why didn't you write it up there? Huh? That was the answer. Why didn't you write it up there with the other one? So you guess that. Because, because this, these are just our options. 
Exactly. These, these are our options. And that was the answer. No, the answer is that these are not, we don't know whether these are congruent or not. This is the orientation of parts. Side side angle is the orientation of the parts that are marked up here. Okay, the orientation of the parts that are congruent to one another. That orientation needs to match to one of these for us to get the conclusion of congruence. Side side angle does not match any of these, do they? Or does it? No. Okay. So there's no conclusion that can be made. If I did something like this, if I gave you that to be parallel to that. Yeah. Okay. So if that's parallel to that, let's say that just looking at the parallel lines, let's let's remove that. In that, would you make the argument that that angle there is the same as that one? Okay, so now, looking at the order of parts, okay, do you have, well, uh, let's just cover up the bottom one here. Would you have a side, an angle that is between, and then another side? Okay. So you'd have side angle side there. You would have the same. I'm, a, I'm not going to cover up the bar or open up the bottom one, but you'd get the same thing on the bottom. Could I have also looked at this and said I had an angle, a side, followed by an angle, yeah. and that side is sandwiched between two angles, correct? So if I gave you one more piece of information in regards to parallelism, we would see that side angle side or angle side angle does match up here, okay? Knowing then that those two would work. Okay? Now, because those two work, if angle side angle works, angle angle side would have also worked. I don't want to get into that, but it, it would have been fine. Okay? But we don't, right here, start off with this. And the orientation part is side side angle. And we have no theorems or postulates that say with that information you get congruency. So there's no conclusion that can be made. When I go to This one here, okay. Obviously, that's the same in both, right? Okay. Can I cover up that bottom triangle? And what would be the ordering of parts up here? Angle, side, angle. And you see how the side is sandwiched between two consecutive angles. Maybe that's one way of thinking about it. When you have a letter in the middle that is different than the letters that are kind of, you guys know what bookends are? Okay, you go on a bookshelf, you got books on a bookshelf and they're starting to fall over, right? Okay, you put two heavy objects on the end of them and you squeeze them together and now the books aren't going to fall over, right? Those are called bookends. Okay, kind of like a clamp, yeah, okay? If these are kind of bookend angles where they're on the, the um, oh, wrong color. They are in the outside of that side, right? They are squeezing or clamping down that side that I've marked, correct? Okay. We then have angle side angle, okay? Um, now what I need to do is I need to cover up the other one. And I look there. Is that also angle side angle? Yeah. So because I had ASA in both of them, now I can make the argument, because ASA is one of our postulates, I can make the argument that those two triangles are indeed congruent. Now here's my question. Is that angle congruent to that angle? Yeah. Third angle theorem, right? Okay. Now can the, can the triangles be congruent based off the angle, angle, angle? No. No. Okay. Uh, does not guarantee congruence. Similar. But I still have that segment congruent to itself, right? Let's do this. Let's cover up the top triangle. Looking at just the bottom one. And I want to, I want to talk about an angle. I want, I want to use the blue one, and I want to use one of the red ones. It doesn't matter which red one I use. Let's just cover up that one. So I use the other red angle. Do you have two angles? Yes. The side that is congruent, is it included? Is it between those two angles? Are those two angles clamping down or the book ends for that side? No. So when I write the order of parts here, it's angle, angle, and now the side is outside those two angles, right? So it's either that or SAA. Either way, fine. 
But you see how that's angle, angle, side, and not maybe angle to side to angle? That kind of makes sense to everybody? It, it's very important that we recognize that because if we're trying to go this route, skipping over consecutive parts like that, um, we're going to get ourselves in trouble at some point or some juncture in the course. Okay? Now you would un unhighlight that bottom or open that bottom one up. Or sorry, I guess cover that bottom one up and do the same thing with the top. And you'll find out that angle angle side exists in the top as well. Uh, but that verifies because we did angle side angle, right? That's what's kind of direct here. Well, angle side angle is present. Angle angle side is also present, but you might have to add in that final congruency of angle. Okay. Um, a couple more. What about those two? They can grow? Bye. Side, side, side. What about those two? Uh, angle, side, angle. angle, side, angle. Because you have vertical angles there. Okay. Um, so I have ASA here, and I have ASA there. If angle, side, angle works, what else works? Angle, angle, side. Because these to the red and blue angles are congruent to the red and blue angles, right? Doesn't that mean that the green angles have to be congruent by the third angle theorem? And if the green angles are congruent, let's just get rid of that stuff. If the green angles are congruent, then don't I have an angle, an angle, and then a side that is not between them? The way I would write that is angle, angle, and then a side that is not between them. Remember, the way that we write our names, the order of the parts in our names tells us what's between and what's not between, right? Okay, so that side is not between my two legs. So angle, angle, side would be enough to show us those two triangles are zero. What about, what about those two? Not enough information, right? Okay, two parts, here, two parts, that's great. We just don't know anything else. Uh, those two. Angle side angle again, right? It's the same pictures now, special types of angles. Right angles are always congruent, correct? What about those two? I heard it yup. I heard it yup because somebody saw a side angle side here, right? What do you see over here? Is your angle between two sides? No, so you got two sides, but your angle is not between them. So your angle is there, maybe, right? Yeah. You see how those ordering of parts, even though I've got three congruencies, the ordering of parts is not correct in both, or it's not the same in both? Okay, so those triangles may not be congruent. Okay? Uh, they might be 100% congruent. We just don't have enough information yet. Uh, all right, so that type of example you're going to start seeing in your homework. Uh, and, and those of, that ability of recognizing those things, guys, is going to help us when we get to starting talking about other shapes, quadrilaterals, okay, uh, and then taking those quadrilaterals and kind of um, categorizing them as parallelograms or uh, taking our parallelograms and categorizing them as rectangles and uh, rhombuses and squares and being able to figure out the facts that change those things uh, or properties that change the the progression from a square or for a rectangle to a square or from a parallelogram to a rhombus uh, to a square or something like that. Understanding our our side 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 angle side angle that kind of stuff is going to be very useful. Okay, these types of questions uh, are, are really the same thing. It's just now they're telling you we want to prove it by angle side angle, provided the information we have right now. What additional thing do you need? Okay, so if you can kind of draw a comparison to where you would use this idea. If I'm inside a proof, we need three congruencies on the left-hand side of our proof, right? What they're saying with this question is that you currently have two of them. You have this angle, DTU, and this angle, STU, congruent. You have UT congruent to UT, right? Okay, at your disposal, you have these four theorems, or four postulates and theorems. You have those things at your disposal, right? My hopes are that you recognize that side, side, side is kind of stupid to have. Because if I'm going to use side, 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 
I'm going to have to do two more congruencies instead of just one more congruency, right? Because I got an angle and a side, I should probably use one of these three. The argument then is, okay, so side angle side or angle side angle, okay? Um, because if I got angle side angle, then angle angle side is going to also work, okay? So I got to check one of these, okay? Uh, so my goal would be, can I try to prove this proof with using this technique. If I'm going to use that technique, does everybody see that I would need that angle congruent to that angle? Okay, so I can kind of foreshadow. If I'm going to use angle side angle, I would have to show those angles congruent. And now I can kind of step back from my proof and say, okay, do I have the tools necessary to be able to do that? Is there anything that's in my proof or anything in my vocabulary that's going to allow me to show those two angles congruent? Maybe I can, maybe I can't, okay? Um, but it gives you kind of a way to kind of think through the next couple steps of your proof before you get there. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, maybe I, I said I want to try angle side angle, and I would realize that I have to try those. And maybe I look at my proof, look at all the stuff that I have, and I'm thinking there's absolutely no way that I can do that. Well, then my other option would be side angle side, right? I'm sorry, uh, sorry, angle angle side. So maybe I try to see, do I have the ability of showing those in the room? Maybe I do. Maybe this thing's a kite, and I know that angle D and angle S and a kite are three ruins. Maybe that's uh, given information, okay? And then I can prove these two triangles in the room. Does that make sense, everybody? So it gives you uh, an idea of what you currently have and then how you can add one more congruency to get the triangle congruency, okay? Um, so I like those types of questions. If I ask you, let's do one more of these. All right, if I want that one, right now I've got that information, right? I got side X V can grow to itself. I got the right angle can grow. So what is the next part that needs to be congruent so I can use side angle side? Okay, but which side? Okay, not the not the hypotenuse. The so WV needs to be congruent to KX, right? And then you would have if you cover up one of those. Do I have side angle side there then? And then cover up the other one. Would you have side angle side over here? Okay. So that's kind of the idea behind those types of questions. I'm trying to get you programmed to be able to throughout your proof. Kind of start to see where is my proof leading me to? Okay, where are these current steps of one congruency, two congruencies? Where are they directing me to? Okay, are they getting me to side angle side? Are they getting me to side side side? That kind of stuff. The one thing that I think is probably important right now to understand is that inside a proof, showing congruent segments is very difficult. Okay, um, so if, if I have an option, we have more ways of showing angles congruent than we do segments. So I would probably try to involve proofs that involve the angles. Okay. Um, I'm going to open up section 4.3. It's actually, I think, already open for you. Uh, that will be due on Monday. My plan...